République François Mitterrand. So we are standing right underneath uh, Le Grand Arc and it's pretty hard to get a scale of this, how big this thing is. It's, uh, it's very, very big. So we're at La Defense, which is... Uh, which is a, um, a, di a quarter, a district, a, a suburb. And La Grande Arche is part of La Defense. La Defense is quite a big uh, kind of office complex, if you like. And it's very hard to get a scale of how big this uh, arch is. It's kind of a square arch, I suppose, which doesn't really make sense, but. Um, it's an arch and it is huge. It's a good place to start. And I'm going to walk home from here. So just some, um, it really is massive. It's at least 80 metres high, at least. It's hard to judge exactly, but it's at least 80 metres, 90 metres high, probably 100 metres. And they've got a ton of scaffolding around it. I think they're doing this. They've stripped tiles off it. It's 
quite a structure, quite, quite something. I think it's actually got offices in it. I think people actually work in there. Can't be sure. There was a whole bunch of people uh, smoking, smoking out the front of it, but um, they've all gone in. Really, really, really quite special. Yeah, there's definitely offices in each side. It's quite something. Okay, so what we're going to do is Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to walk home from here. This is Le Grand Arche, and I've got no clue how far it is to get home. It's about 10 or 12 kilometres, I guess. But uh, I haven't been on Google Maps to figure it out or anything, but the uh, problem is we'll be walking straight into the sun, so uh, the shots are going to be fairly interesting. But I walk down to the sand, walk along the sand, and we'll get some great shots anyway. Uh, there's certainly some great shots to be had. But I can shoot back away from the sun anyway. I don't have to shoot into the sun. But, uh, all right, here we go. The next, uh, the next little trip. I thought you'd like a look at this uh, Le Grand Arche. Now, I'm still at the Le Grand Arche. And I'm shooting straight up. Champs Elysees, and what you see here right in the middle, it's quite small, I don't have a long lens on, uh, is the Arc de Triomphe. So they've kind of lined everything up in, in Paris. Uh, now there's a, there's a metro, there's a metro line, number one, which runs all the way through these these monuments. It starts with Le Grand Arche. And you can see something, I don't know what it is, but you can see something else through the Arc de Triomphe. And that's that's further out. But one end of uh, this metro line is um, is Le Grand Arche, which is where we are. Uh, and you you head through all of the uh, monuments. You see all of the Paris monuments on this, well, not all of them, but most of them, on this uh, number one metro line. And then you wind up at uh, Chateau Vincennes, which is, uh, I hope I've pronounced it probably, but that's at the other end of this line. That's maybe what we can see through the, um, through the, uh, the, uh, the Arc de Triomphe is his Chateau Vincent, but uh, we're shooting into the sun, it's hard to see. So anyway, just a look. Just a bit of a, uh, bit of a shot walking away from uh, La Grande Arche. And right next to it is this uh, incredible structure. I just shot the inside of it. But this structure here is also uh, quite incredible. It's a, um, a self-supporting parabolic concrete uh, building and it's actually massive. It's this whole shape, there's no internal uh, supports. I've just been in there, uh, it's pretty nice. And this continuous shape, it's a kind of uh, parabolic, uh, well it is, it's a parabolic self-supporting uh, concrete dome. The concrete structure looks uh, maybe about a metre thick, more, it's more. Easy, could even be 1800. So that's a lot of you could sit down and work it out, roughly. 
That is one hell of a structure. The best way I can describe uh, La Defence is uh, it's very similar to North Sydney. So we made it down to the Seine and I'm just on the bank of the Seine barge going past, there's lots of barges still work on, uh, work on the river so a uh, very beautiful uh, very very beautiful spot my friend actually lives on a barge and uh, I want to get some uh, footage of it I'm shooting straight into the sun, it's pretty hard just on a boat jetty, uh, a boat club um, overlook on the river, and pretty good spot. Barge is going past. The sun is uh, there's not a cloud in the sky. They're not spraying chemtrails, and it's crystal clear. Gorgeous spot of the river. Uh, pretty glorious day. Good day for a walk. So my guess is it's um, my guess is it's still kind of six six or eight k's home, there's a bridge behind us which I'm going to um, walk across and then I'm on the right side and then I can follow the uh, follow the send home, pretty simple but uh, very very beautiful spot crystal clear day, it makes it hard to uh, shoot video because you, you're working off the LD screen off the back, the LCD screen and you can't see it but anyway, let's carry on I want to get home So we're on the Seine, I uh, found a bridge to cross over. Uh, what we're looking at is a smokestack, a chimney stack. It's not smoke, it's just steam. Uh, we live uh, not that far from that. So it's, you know, I guess it's maybe 5k to get home, but uh, just a bit of a look up the Seine at the beautiful uh, steam stack. Uh, so, about to cross over and uh, I'll have some shade and I'll be right next to the water all the way home uh, so it should be very nice so we're facing south now on the uh, on the Seine just on this little bridge and we're looking at La Defence which is where Le Grand Arche is and it's not that far from home it's a good it's just a good walk so let me zoom out it's like a kind of a North Sydney uh, area I suppose all the, all the major insurance companies and fuel companies etc etc it's like a it's like a CBD but uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty good it's good for a look and uh, it's a pretty good spot every now and again you just hit these spots in in France in Paris that are just uh, really really spectacular and this is one of them. On the left you've got some uh, apartments. You've got this beautiful walkway next to the uh, 
to the Seine. And all in all, it's just, just absolutely beautiful. Some ladies up there with their dogs talking away. Uh, so now I'm at F14 exposed for this very light air and that seems about right. So I'll just I'll pan back into that dark spot and it'll just be completely black so that's where an ND filter you need an ND filter but the problem with ND filters to get a good one they're about 600 500 bucks even more for Nikon. So what the ND filter does is darkens up the highlights so you can expose for darker areas without blowing it out. If you expose, like I'm exposed now, I'm on F14. Uh, if you expose for the highlights, when you pan back to the dark, you can't even see these ladies with the dogs. I can't even find them. So that's that's the correct exposure for uh, for that very bright city in blinding sunlight. Uh, F14, it looks nice. But that's a pretty good shot. Uh, that's a pretty good shot in anyone's language. kind of framed up nice uh, but cameras yeah anyway cameras cameras are a bit of a uh, you can spend as much as you like so anyway I saw this this lens it's a portrait lens it's an 85 millimeter fixed prime lens it doesn't zoom and it is super super crystal clear sharp tack sharp like uh, in the portraits done with this lens and uh, just something else but anyway that's a whole different subject so that's five that's only five grand Australian uh, you know just uh, a bit of spare change so photography just then the problem is it won't fit my camera I need a full frame camera so you know away you go then then you need another camera then then just for my camera here just some Nikon lenses the lens I you know, it, it just doesn't stop. So, 1200 for the next lens that I want. Starting price at 1200 then we work our way up. That's, but that's for a, that's for a good, uh, that's for a good, uh, a good lens. The lens I got on is a kit lens. It's the lens I got with the camera. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of borderline acceptable, but you outgrow this stuff. You outgrow this stuff very quickly, and once I get back to Australia and make some money, I'm just going to cash up and get some lenses and stuff I need because I just can't get the, I just can't get the crystal clear, tack sharp, tack sharp video and shots that I want. It's kind of acceptable, but it's kind of not once you. Once you see what can be done, you scout around YouTube and stuff. Once you see what can be done, uh, you kind of you don't you don't. Uh, it's it's a case of wanting to be professional. That's what it is. And, and and there's a level of there's a kind of a base level of gear that you need. You know, like this is a, this is a D7000. It's quite a few years old, but the camera's fine. The camera body will never wear out. But um, uh, it's good for, I don't know, a quarter of a million, half a million photos probably. And I'm nowhere near that. But uh, then you go, this is a crop sensor. There's a, it's the smaller sensor. Then you go into the full frame sensor, which takes a totally different lens. So you're heading into, you're heading into uh, get the wallet out territory. And 
uh, then it starts from there. It just depends what you want to do. It depends if you want to be a pro, amateur, um, you know, how well you know your camera, how well, you know, it depends what you're trying to do. And if you're always trying to better yourself, if you're always trying to better your shots, uh, part of it is you need the lenses. It's not so much the camera body. The camera body is not too bad. It's you need the lenses. You've got to have the lenses. It's the camera only sees what the uh, what the lens gives it. If the lens is kind of just off a fraction, hard to focus, uh, can't really nail it. Kind of kind of soft. Uh, you're never going to get a, your camera's not going to do anything. It doesn't matter what, what camera body you have. Nice little shot here. Birds are singing in the shade. A couple of bridges, boats going past, it's all kind of pretty good. Sorry about the shakes. A few ducks there going for a swim. Migrating. That would be uh, quite something to live in there. That one's very nice. That one is very nice. It's like timber weatherboards. That's, that's nice. I think they've had that made. That's what that is, that's not a boat, that's a, uh, they've had it made. I'll just shut it off and re-expose it. So what this boat is, is different from all the rest. They've actually had the, uh, the whole thing made. And it's sitting on its own uh, floating base, steel base. It's not actually a boat. It's a, uh, and it's moored in with these, uh, you can see these steel tie braces, there's two of them, there's one here, there's one down the other end. So this barge, this houseboat, is never going anywhere. It can rise up and down on the Seine, uh, on these pins, as the, the uh, water level rises. But it can't actually uh, can't actually go anywhere, uh, and it's got these two. I don't know if you can see them, but it's got two diagonal wires, uh, quite heavy-duty wires, about 16 mil by the look of it. Um, holding that thing square, so it can't get out of square. But that is a great idea. I love it. Nice little shot on the water. That's uh, that city building in the background is where I've come from.
so that's where I've come from. It's uh, quite a hike actually. <laughs> Right, I'm going home, I've had enough walking. It's like half past 12. It's 20 past 12, I'm going to get on a bus and finish this last leg. I've been walking for three hours, that's about 15 kilometres. Give or take a bit. So I'll, uh, I'll work it out on Google. See ya.